So good afternoon, everybody. Thank you all very, very much for uh, for coming today. I think Ellie would be would be touched to to know that you all took time to come and um, and share a very special moment as we as we honor Ellie Dell today. Uh, before I begin with um, the formal pilot program today, um, I do want to introduce a few people that are here. And uh, I'm going to start with members of our school committee, our chairman Mel Webster. Chairman Jerry Venezia. Woo! Next to Jerry is Janine Embriano. Woo! And next to Janine is Julie Cockey. Thank you all for being here. Behind Julie is our town administrator, Michael Gilberta. State Representative Brad Jones. And no longer on the school committee, but he was here at the time when uh, the very generous gift was presented to the school committee is Cliff Bowers. But <laughs> Ellie's friends and former colleagues and family members that are here today, I really want to thank you. This is, uh, this is a really special moment uh, for me uh, because Ellie has left behind something very, very special, not only in the form of a very generous donation, but I think uh, just an awful lot of goodwill. So I, I do have a few things to, uh, to say as the superintendent of the district um, on behalf of, of the district today. And then we have a few other speakers. Um, I'm going to ask Mel Webster to represent the school committee. Um, Ellie's nephew, Jerry Iandoli, who will also speak, and then some former colleagues of Ellie's, Bob Ward, Bill Eastman, and Joan O'Donnell. So uh, we have a few, a few things to share with all of you today. The Dalai Lama noted that generosity is the most natural outward expression of an inner attitude of compassion and loving kindness. And it is in this spirit that we have gathered to honor and memorialize an exceedingly kind and generous teacher who both through her words and actions demonstrated a true dedication to education and a belief that all young people possess great potential. The extraordinarily generous gift that Ellie left behind as a part of her estate will serve for many, many years to assist young people in their pursuit of a post-secondary education and therefore the realization of their dreams and aspirations. It was in 2013 when I was then serving as the principal at North Reading High School that I was first contacted by a local attorney who wished to speak with me about establishing a scholarship fund in memory of a former high school English teacher, Eleanor Dell. I'm going to come back to 2013 in just a moment. I had met Ellie on a few occasions when long after she had retired, she came to the high school to visit with former colleagues, some of whom you will hear from a little bit later this afternoon. One did not need to be in Ellie's company very long to realize that this was a fun and energetic and positive person. But having only met Ellie a couple of times for a brief interaction, I needed to do a bit of research on who this special person <laughs> really was as I began the task of framing my remarks for today's ceremony. What I found was a person who really did make a true difference in the lives of the young people who passed through her classroom. Excerpts taken from evaluations of Ellie's work over her 31-year career include the following. Let me tell you, going into her personnel file was a real treat. <laughs> it's about this thick. There are handwritten teacher evaluations. It was a real hoot to go through. A couple of quotes from Bill Butler, who I think probably all of us, if not, if not most of us, know. Once again, Ms. Dell must be praised for her tireless efforts among students, faculty, and administration to promote a warm, productive school atmosphere. Her compassion, understanding, wit, and grace enhance the tone of the school. Hers is a classroom where students are happy to be. Warmth and a sense of camaraderie characterize her relationships with other staff members. In a sense, she functions, functions as head cheerleader for the staff. <laughs> Russell Dever, who I did not know, but I, I will as an English department chair, am I correct, at one time? Yeah. Oh, right. Russell's <laughs> Well, you really said you really wrote this. <laughs> Pupil motivation has long been one of Miss Dell's strengths. She brings a contagious enthusiasm into the classroom. From the beloved Arthur Kenny, her strength is in her ability to work with young people, her dedication to teaching, her background, and her personality. Ms. Dell finds something in every student to work on and develop using a variety of techniques, especially making every student feel worthwhile and important and inspiring of confidence, which many students need to succeed. It has been a pleasure to work with such a thoughtful, sincere professional. Education needs more people like her. So now back to 2013. 
The conversation with Ellie's attorney went something like this. The trustees of the Eleanor Dell Trust wish to establish a scholarship in Ellie's name. Now, as the high school principal for a number of years, I would get calls like that from time to time, and in my mind, I was thinking it was probably the typical $500 or $1,000 scholarship. So, the attorney at the time was very polite. He allowed me to talk with him about what the process would be for establishing a scholarship in Ellie's name, and I told him about the, the one-page form he would need to fill out, and the contact at the guidance office and such, and he very politely listened, and then he, he kind of let me finish, and he said, well, we're talking about a six-figure six scholarship. So needless to say, the conversation took a very different time. <laughs> and I said, oh, okay, well, we need to talk a little bit further about that. So eventually, <clears throat> he raised the number of $400,000. And each time, I would hang up the phone and talk with him a little bit later about some questions. I would research and get answers to questions that he had, and the, the number would keep growing. And eventually, and literally, it may have been the day of the school committee meeting on April, it was April 28th, 2014. If it was not the day of the school committee meeting, it was very shortly before that, that the final number was announced to me, and a check was presented to the school committee for $625,000, yeah. with an additional $5,000 set aside for a bonus scholarship to be awarded in the first year. And I think <clears throat> it's very special that, um, where's Keanu? Keanu. Keanu Lamont graduated from the high school in 2014. Yeah, Lil's clapping. Keanu was and is a terrific young person. She's here with her mom, too. And um, she was a recipient of the first year of the scholarships being awarded. And uh, her mom reached out to me early this week and asked me if, uh, if Keanu could come today and be introduced to Jerry, which uh, Ellie's nephew, which I did do earlier today. And I think it was very nice of you, Keanu, to take the time to come back from BC to be here as a sign of respect to, uh, to Ellie. So thank you. It's nice to have you here. So there was also an additional $15,000 to be donated for instructional materials and resources for the art department at the, uh, at the high school. And so that's why the plaque, which you're all going to see a little bit later uh, today, um, has been placed in this area because behind me are the art classrooms for the middle school and the high school. And I can assure you, Jerry, that the, the money has been put to very good use. We have a wonderful art department here. Many of our teachers are here today. Um, I think it's a sign of both respect and gratitude for that additional donation that was made. So clearly, um, it was an amount of money that I, I was uh, evidently not used to receiving on behalf of the school department, $645,000 as it was, um, and I was speechless. And it really is uh, a tribute, I think, to um, Ellie as a person, that she would be thinking of the place that obviously meant so much to her, and that she would ask that her, um, her memory be um, memorialized here um, through a scholarship endowment that's certainly going to provide a wonderful opportunities for people to, uh, to further their education who might not otherwise have been able to do so. So we pay tribute to Ellie today, um, a wonderful lady with a huge heart, um, truly representative of all the fine things that we hope for in all of our teachers. Um, and Jerry, it's, it's true that her legacy will, will forever stand here, uh, and it is my gratitude that I extend to you on behalf of the school district. So thank you very, very much. ask our, our school committee chairperson first, uh, Mel Webster, to say a few words, and then Jerry, I'll ask you to come up. Okay, Mel? John gave me 45 minutes, but I told him I don't make five. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting that he used quotes from Ellie's uh, reviews over the years and evaluations, because I didn't know Ellie, and never had the chance to meet her. So I thought the best way to pay tribute to her was to find out what some of her former students had to say about her. And uh, I'll get to that in a second. Um, Ellie was a teacher, a mentor, and a friend to so many North Reading High School students and colleagues for 31 years here, 1963 to 1994. She taught English, but she played a much larger role in the lives of many students. And we, we talk a lot about the generosity and, and the money that Ellie left for the scholarships and for the art department, and that's awesome. But you can't put a value on what she left with so many students who graduated from North Reading High School based on what I've read, heard, and seen from people who went to school there. So people are saying, but Ellie was an English teacher. Why are we putting her plaque outside the art department? 
She was also an artist. She loved the arts. She had a shop, the Pebble, at Goose Rock Beach in Maine. And many of her students went there. I don't know if that was after they were her students or before they were her students, but the, or, or, or when they were still her students, but they seemed to enjoy visiting her at that shop in Goose Rock's Maine. And she seemed to let them get away with a lot when they were up there. So I don't know what that means, but I'm just saying the kids love Ellie. They loved her after they graduated. They still remember her today. So as I said, when, when we um, received this generous gift at the school committee meeting, there was a flood of comments and quotes on social media. And I spend most of my life on social media, so I, I found most of them. Um, and, and I was amazed at what people had to say about her. The words that were most often used were amazing, lovely, incredible, and my favorite words, a lot of people called her grand. I hope when I die somebody calls me grand. <laughs> because I think grand is, is a great word to describe somebody. And, and based on these quotes, um, she was a grand woman. So I'll just gonna, I'm just going to read a few of these. She was an amazing woman. She brought so much joy to us at NRHS. She was one of those teachers you looked forward to seeing while you were in school. Mrs. Dell loved her students at NRHS. Amazing woman and kindest heart I've ever met. I even, to, I even have told my children years ago what a difference she made in my life. She is still giving. Very fond memories of Mrs. Dell. She was priceless. I think this one, this one is the one if you want to leave a legacy. Everyone's life is better with, Mrs. with, with a Mrs. Dell in it. What an incredible lady. Mrs. Dell continues to show the students at, at NRHS just how much she really cared and believed in them. The legacy she leaves behind is more than that of any teacher. She was much more than a teacher to many students. NRHS was the fortunate benefactor of having her in life. And now with Mrs. Mrs. Dell's passing, she continues to give to the NRHS student she cared so much about. She helped me see in myself someone I really wanted to get to know better. What a gift. She nurtured a love of writing that has stayed with me for the past 50 years and changed the course of my life. 50 years. 50 years someone still remembering what she instilled in that person, a love of writing. She was one of a handful of teachers that really made a difference for me. I am so grateful to have known her and to have learned from her. Mrs. Dell had one of the biggest hearts ever. And then this is my favorite, and uh, it's the last one. All of us love Mardell, Ma Dell. She was like a godmother to all of us. <laughs> And I think, you know, based on, I, I wish, I feel, I feel very unfortunate that I never had the chance to meet her because everything um, I've read and heard, not only did she sound like a wonderful person, but she sounded like a character. Yeah. And I can see some of the other teachers and someone that, you know, I probably would have uh, enjoyed speaking to. So thanks to Ellie's generosity and thoughtfulness, she continues to give to North Reading and she will be forever remembered for her warmth and kindness. Thank you. Thank you, Mel. Jerry, could you please. You. Thank you. I'd like to thank the community of North Reading and the school department, especially John, for honoring my aunt today. I know that she would be very, very happy. When I was asked to say a few words, um, I in the possession of a lot of letters that go from student teachers, from teachers, uh, beautiful pieces of correspondence. And now that you've mentioned all this, I'm glad I didn't bring them and read them to you. I thought what I might do is read you something that Ellie wrote about herself in a profile of herself when she was at Northeastern College. And I'd like to read an excerpt from it. One strong fault I bring to this new area of guidance is that I talk too much. <laughs> I feel an essential item to be able to listen well. I must train myself to be quiet. What strength do I bring to guidance? A compassionate nature, I guess. I feel it would be fantastic to have contributed something to some human being. The right word, the right gesture, a smile. Exerting a little leadership in the fields of education could be one major goal. To live life more as a continuing process of growth and not as one sunburst as another. To promote appreciation of the arts, literature, music, and awareness of life and 
while doing so for others, to change my own self-awareness, my own self-image, to understand that there are human differences and to be realistic about them, and to make, to make the best of my own talents, abilities, and intellect, to help change those ideas I do not believe in. Another major inaccuracy is my prescription of material things. I would simply do that no more. And finally, there are other words in here that specifically deal with her family from some of all her love of her mother and father and brothers and sisters and her faith. And she speaks of her 18 months in the um, serving uh, 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 soldiers in uh, Japan. And that one of the things that she wrote in here that she was concerned about the education of the soldiers when they came back, <laughs> which today is very wrong. Mm -hmm. So with that, I'm glad I didn't bring all her letters because she had to have a hiding thing. <laughs> so so um, with that, I wanted to make you aware of what she was like when she was 35 or 40 years old. So she knew this was coming. So with that, I want to thank you all once again for honoring my aunt. And I also want to mention Mary Stauber, who's the other trustee who, with, with her. We've been able to do these type of things, and we're very happy to do so. Mary, thank you so much. Last but certainly not least, <coughs> former colleagues of Ellie's, Joni O'Donnell, Lil Deesman, and Bob Ward. Thank you. Come on, please. Well, I am Lillian Deesman, if you didn't know. And uh, this plaque, uh, dedicated to Ellie, is an abridged version of her career at North Reading High School. In Ellie's humorous way, she would say, this is an unsolicited testimonial to me. <laughs> <laughs> Ellie was a mentor to me back when I started here in 1987. Imagine that. I was the new kid on the block. We became fast friends and came to realize that Mama Dell was just that, a mother to all. Giving advice when asked, or sometimes in her subtle way when not asked, Ellie would make suggestions, which in the end, whether you asked for it or not, you knew she was correct. Ellie was a given person in life, and even though she's no longer with us, her generosity continues through the scholarship fund she set up for the students of North Reading High School and for the Arts Department. I was proud to call her a colleague, but even prouder to call her my friend. Thanks for coming. She would have loved this. <laughs>
we were so involved in our project that we forgot that the doors could be locked. <laughs> <laughs> However, Allie's bright sense of humor kicked in, and she said, if we can't get out by the door, we'll just climb out the window. <laughs> then I'm off to Goose Rock Beach for the summer. <laughs> <laughs> Later, we found out that the custodians were very concerned about our delayed presence in the classroom on the last day of school. They contacted Dr. O'Donoghue for advice, and he told them to let us be and not to lock the door, as we would eventually leave. <laughs> in retrospect, I'll always remember this illustration of her humor. Just imagine two 50-year-old teachers climbing out of a classroom window on the last day of school. <laughs> I am so proud to say that Ellie was my best friend. She was always there for me personally, professionally, and socially. For 22 years, we were colleagues at North Reading High School, and every day I met Ellie dearly, and my love and friendship for her will last forever. If Ellie were here, she would be so touched and proud that the art room was named and dedicated in her honor. Tonight, Ellie is looking down and smiling, as we never knew the extent of her financial largesse. Her generosity is apparent in how she would share it with her beloved students. However, that's exactly what a loving teacher and mother would do. Finally, good night, Ellie, and until we meet again, vaya con Dios. colleague in the English department with Ellie for roughly the first half of my career. I was hired in the middle of the 1979-1980 school year as a temporary replacement for Linda Welch of City Hall. And as most of you might have experienced when you start a new job, um, I was in a bit of a fog for <laughs> six, seven years <laughs> while, while I was on the job. And, um, but one of my first memories uh, it was Ellie just kind of taking me under her wing, sometimes literally, and just really being a guide. People have used the word mentor here tonight, and I very much label her the same, just to sort of help me keep my way in. Um, and then as I got used to being here, and being one of her colleagues, and being a professional teacher here, um, it became, I became quickly aware of how beloved she was, what an influence she was on so many people, the teachers as well as the students. Um, and I have two quick anecdotes to mention, and, the, and how beloved she was is the, the source of one of those anecdotes. Um, maybe my first full year, I was um, assigned to teach a section of creative writing, which might sound like a lovely instructional opportunity, but creative writing, at least when I started here, was Ellie's baby. And a ton of kids had signed up for this class, which is a great testimony of her popularity. But so many kids had signed up that they it was a spillover to me. And um, I ended up with a section of, of the class, and it worked out fine. But it's a, I don't take it personally. I take it as a sign of Ellie's, how, how beloved she was. The kids were not happy. <laughs> they were not happy and ended up with me. And, but, but I survived it, and they survived, and it worked out great. Um, and then Ellie retired about halfway through my career. And it's a sign of, again, what a person she was, what a character she was. I'll steal Mel's word. Um, you know, for the many years that I still have left to teach here, and, and Lillian and Joan can attest to this, and Linda and other people, and Bob Pushkas over there, and other people as well, can attest to the fact that as, as much as, as many years have passed as, uh, without her being here to work, we all stayed very friendly with her. We might not have seen her as often as we would have liked, but she really remained a great friend and a great presence in our lives. Um, and that leads me to the second quick anecdote I'll mention. Um, Mel mentioned, and Joan and a couple other people have mentioned Goose Rock Beach in Kennebunkport, which is a wonderful beach if you've never been. It's a great walking beach, among other things. But um, I actually started going up there to visit other friends right after I finished high school. So by the time I met Ellie, I was familiar with Goose Rock Beach for about 10 years. But then every time I went up there, and I've been up every summer since the early 70s, I made a point of visiting Ellie. I stayed over at her house. But she had this adorable little house that she had there. Um, but one time when I was there, you know, I made a point of visiting her, but a couple of times I'd run into her by accident. And one of those times, um, as a couple of my people who know me know, I have a, a godson who's an adult with autism. And he has one of those savant traits, which is that, is that he 
is just a master of dates. And if he ever meets you, he wants to know when you were born. And then if he sees you in 10 years, he'll tell you when you were born. <laughs> and we went out to eat at uh, Allison's restaurant in Kennebunk Court. And uh, Ellie walked in as we were standing waiting for our table. And Randy, my godson, met, uh, basically announced to everybody in the restaurant <laughs> Ellie's birthday. <laughs> so I swear I did not tell him. But he, and, and I flipped out. I was really upset that he had done that because I thought Ellie was going to kill me. She was great about it. She was a great sport, but I thought he had revealed this tremendous secret. And it was going to be a big problem. She, she was a great sport, among many, many other traits. So I'll just close by saying um, I was at Goose Rock Beach. I was visiting uh, these same friends and I went up um, we stayed in Biddeford, but we always go to Goose Rocks Beach several times during our stays. And every time I walk on that beach, I think of her. I drive by her house, which isn't exactly the same as it was. It's been remodeled, as I'm sure you know. But um, I, you know, she's just such a presence there still, for, I think, for all of us. And, uh, and you know, Mel gave a great comment at the end when he said he didn't know her, but he really has a feeling for her. And anybody who did know her knows what it was like to be with her. And we all miss her, and this is a great dedication. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>